Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Porterhouse Skyrim Mod Reviews. I am your host, Porterhouse, and that's no bull. I apologize for not having a mod review out last weekend. I somewhat naively thought that the mod we're about to cover was going to be ready back on the 19th, and I was way wrong. Hopefully this review will make up for that. As I said, this is a very special episode, and right off the bat, I'm going to tell you we are covering Nisa Tanaka's Amazing World of Bikini Armor. Now, I knew this mod was coming out uh, and even got a preview of it, so you can imagine that mentally I have been bouncing around like a kangaroo on speed. Now, I was even able to get a copy of it way in advance, but unfortunately for me, I still had to wait until the great Kaufman completed his CBBE conversion and body slide files before I could get into it. Uh, so around midnight uh, the other night, uh, I saw that the uh, mod page had changed and popped up with the new CBBE updates and immediately downloaded it and began checking it out. Three hours later, I realized that this mod review was going to be something a bit out of the ordinary. Now, I want all of you to stay with me because this is going to be a longer than usual video just because of the number of things to cover in this. So stay with me to the end because I have a special message for you all. Not only did Nisa introduce three brand spanky new armors with this mod, he revisited all of his older ones and touched up and added pieces to almost all of them. That's right, you get all of his older works, uh, most with new parts, and you also get three new ones so you can make Skyrim skimpy again. Speaking of which, these armors are skimpy and scanty, so if that is not to your liking, please check out some of my other videos. In a recent online conversation that I had with Nisa, I asked him how long it took him to create this uh, wonder, and he honestly wasn't sure, but his best guess was way over 200 hours. Now, out of the batch, the Falmer armor was the hardest for him to create with the ebony coming in a close second. Out of all the armors, his favorite is the Nord Plate, which I can kind of understand, but it is actually my second favorite. Now, I have to admit that the Blades armor has always been my favorite, but the Ebony Plate may change that. Of the older armors, we have Iron, Steel, Dragonbone, Falmer, Blades, Wolf, Nord Plate, and Dwemer. To this list, Nisa has added Hide, Leather, and Ebony. Along with the alterations to Alvor's shop, the mod has roughly four to five hundred pieces, so you can imagine the sheer scope of both its creations and its conversions by Diablio and Kaufman 77. I wasn't able to contact Diablio, but Kaufman tells me that he started working on this back in February and only recently just finished up. He found the parts to the new ebony armor particularly hard to convert to the point where he was actually inventing new methods to do stuff. His favorite uh, part of that was the steel bikini top number four, which I can understand that is a very nice piece. There are some requirements for this mod. You will need a skeleton, of course, either the XPMS Maximum Skeleton Extended or XP32 Maximum Skeleton. You will also need Net Immerse Override, but if you have Race Menu, then you already have it as it comes with that mod. As always, read the instructions for installing those very carefully. Also, I would recommend having the very latest version of Body Slide and the Amidian Born Armor Retextures. Now, note of caution, the Amidian Born Ebony Armor uh, comes with different color accents and not all of them may work well with Nisa's mod and you may end up with some parts looking different than others. The mod authors also warn that this mod actually uses almost all of the armor slots so there may be conflicts with other mods. Before we dive into the new armors, let's take a quick look at a few of the additions to the older ones. Nisa, not satisfied with his older mods, added parts and touched up a few of the existing pieces. Just about every older armor got something with iron, nord plate, and steel getting the most love, and the others getting a few new parts or redesigns of older pieces. I was particularly enthralled with the remake and additional pieces for the iron armor, including new tops. I can't lie, the iron was my least favorite of Nisa Tanaka's armors, but with the new additions and the Amidian born retextures, it has definitely moved up into the ranks and is now perfect for the barbarian lass. 
The Nord Plate also got a lot of love from Nisa with a ton of new additions such as tops, masks, and new tassets. The meshes for everything are just spot on and work well with just about every other part, including uh, when doing mashups. All of the armors are available from Alvor's shop, which automatically replenishes itself, and all the pieces can be improved at the armor workbench. All the main pieces can then be enchanted to suit your needs. Rather than go into all the new parts and pieces, I'm going to give you a quick slideshow highlighting some of the new parts and pieces, and then after that we will dive into the new armors. As you saw, there are a ton of new components, and that was just the tip of the iceberg. There is just too much stuff to show you in one episode. You need to download the mod, uh, get everything all set with Body Slide, and then go check it out for yourself to see everything. Uh, now, we're going to move on to the new armors. Now, first up, we have the Hide Armor, which turned out really, really nice. There are 13 parts to this, including two different pauldrons. Two different short pants, one of which shows some wear and tear. It's a little breezy. Two separate thigh armors, one top, gloves, a collar, boots, and a belt. Now at first I wasn't sure what to think of this outfit, but the more I looked, the more I started to like it. Don't get me wrong, I love a good thong, and I just realized I rhymed, but the boy shorts are also kind of sexy. The only issues I had was the thigh armor, which is thigh armor number one, clipped into the shorts, but that might very well be a body slide issue on my part. The outfit is very well done and beautiful in its simplicity. The only thing I would like to see is one more variation on the top. Next up we have the leather armor, which is something I have been waiting for from Nisa Tanaka for a while, even more so than the elven and orc armors. The vanilla leather armor is ugly, and even with the uh, various modded versions, it was still kind of lacking something, and Nisa Tanaka seems to have found it. The leather has 18 parts, including two styles of pauldrons, three bikini tops, three thongs, a belt, an abs guard, gauntlets, a neck cover, which I really like, a headgear, which turned out very nice, boots, thigh armor, and pouches. This one was absolutely well done. The mix of parts available makes this variable enough. You can make it unique to your character and to whatever followers that you put it on. The meshes are clean and I did not see any clipping. Of the tops, I love the one with uh, metal discs on it because it reminds me of the Frank Frazetta illustrations that were popular back in the 80s and 90s. Top number three is also excellent with its fine chainmail mesh However, it may be a tad too scanty for YouTube. They're kind of funny that way. The only thing I found lacking are tassets, but you can mix and match other armors. And I found that a couple of the Nord plate tassets went really, really well with the leather. Uh, and then there's, I checked out the iron ones, and those work out pretty well too. Last but not least, we have the ebony armor, which I'm sure you've all been waiting for. This has as many pieces as the leather and hide combined. You get 31 pieces. You get four ab plates, four tops, including a breastplate, three masks, boots, a circlet, gauntlets, a gorget, a harness, three choices of pauldrons, four different tassets, two thigh armor choices, three thongs, a cape, and a skirt. Now, with so many components to this armor, the combinations are almost endless, and I had a lot of fun checking out all the pieces. You can go from scanty to almost fully enclosed in plate and everywhere in between. The variety of components with the excellent meshes and design make this one of Nisa's best armors so far, at least in my opinion. 
I have also found the masks for this armor uh, to be especially pleasing and the best of his blind masks to date. Now I've always said that the blades bikini has been my favorite but the ebony armor may change that. Now the only issue I had is that there's a skirt uh, that does not have a body slide file, at least not for a, uh, CBBE. I already let Kaufman know and I wager I was not the first so this is likely a non-issue very shortly in the future. All of the other pieces were perfect and I only had clipping when in extreme uh, combat poses. Now I definitely got a near automata uh, vibe off of this armor especially with the blind masks on which I don't know if that was on purpose. Uh, if so he achieved it. It was a lot of fun. Um, it is definitely a sweet sweet armor. So there you have it, updates to all, almost all of his older armors and three brand new armors on top of that. Nisa has really surpassed himself, not only with the newer armors, but the redesigns and new parts of the previous ones. But wait, that's not all. The mad genius that he is also created a skin texture that is a blend of fair skin complexion and SG textures renewal. Now, I would have covered that in this uh, mod review as well, but it is only for UNP, so I couldn't. Uh, I do know other folks have tried it, and they loved it. Also available are his facial presets, tint masks, and his head.nif files. Now, using these resources, one of my favorite modsmiths, this time I be a good girl, sir, has created a follower named Anna and has already started on another one. So be sure to check that out. I will put a link below in the description. I'm going to take Tish and a couple of the ladies out and have some fun beating up some critters and other bad guys. And afterwards, I will give you my final thoughts on the mod. And I have a very important message for you that you do not want to miss. Sit back, relax, enjoy the action clips, and we will be back in a bit.
As usual, I had a great deal of fun making these clips and running the ladies through their paces. I tried to cycle through as many followers as I could, wearing different types of uh, Nisa Tanaka's armor so you all could see it in action. All the armor that Tish and the ladies were wearing was taken to the armor workbench and improved. With Tish's maxed out smithing skills combined with smithing gloves and a bonus from a potion or two, the armor rating was pretty high. Now, your mileage may vary depending on your character's smithing skills. Whatever the armor rating, Nisa made every outfit look uniquely gorgeous and eye-catching. The texture, meshes, and design of the individual parts demonstrate his eye for an original form, and a willingness to go that extra, extra, extra mile for us, the end users. I found the changes to Alvor's shop charming and fun and so much easier to deal with than carrying a bunch of bikini books around. Although a lot of people really like those bikini books, I thought they were kind of neat, but honestly, the shop is so much easier to deal with, and the added bonus is that the smithing menu looks semi-sane again. Now, one thing I didn't note at first is that the shop automatically refills itself, so that's a bonus. The CBBE HDT conversions and body slide files worked flawlessly. The issue I had with the skirt that I mentioned earlier was indeed fixed literally with an hour or two of that recording. For as many parts as there are in this mod, I am astonished how fast Kaufman 77 cranked out the CBBE conversion and with so few issues. I can't speak directly for the UUNP conversions, but from what a couple folks have told me, and uh, from what I've read on various forums, everyone seems extraordinarily pleased with Diablo's work on that conversion. Long story short, if you enjoyed Nisa Tanaka's past armor mods, or if you like armors that show a bit of skin, then this is going to be one that you love. Do not miss this. Download it and check it out. Now, this is the part of the review that I really, really need you all to pay attention to. If you watched my past videos, then you know that I constantly beat the drum for donating to mod authors when they have a mechanism in place to do so. Well, this time I'm beating an Odaiko-sized drum for Nisa Tanaka. For various reasons, the Nexus PayPal button would not work for him, and he was told he could not put his PayPal donation directly on the main mod page. So now it's up to us as gamers to support the guy who put in hundreds and hundreds of hours of blood, sweat, and tears to bring us these excellent armor mods. I'm going to throw an email address up for you all to donate directly to Nisa Tanaka, and I'm challenging you to meet or beat my donation of $25. Now, that being said, if you can't afford $25, that's fine. Please donate whatever you can so we can keep Nisa afloat in a weird, weird world. Donating directly is really easy. It's five steps. After logging into PayPal, click on the Pay or Send Money icon, then choose Send Money to Friends and Family. Put in the email address you see here and click Next. Don't worry, I'll put that address in the description below, so all you'll have to do is copy and paste. Next, put in the amount that you would like to donate, add a note if you wish, and click Continue. Finally, verify the amount and click Send Money Now. That's it. It's really easy to do. Try to meet or beat that $25 I was talking about. If you can't, you can't. I understand. I've been there. Donate what you can. Alright, that's it for the review, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you have not already done so. Once again, I'm your host, Porterhouse, and I will see you all in the next review.